Welcome to LEAD. We're talking about maturity. And, and I started on last session with the idea that being protected, having armor on, well, that is a, a part of the maturing process. That it'd be immature to run out and kind of live dangerously with no armor on. I think about how, you know, um, when I was a kid, we just ride a bike. You go get jump on your bike. No padding, no helmet. You just went. I mean, uh, we we would build uh, as a young boy. We build these ramps, and we'd have bikes, and we'd go flying off of those. Sometimes it seems like six feet in the air, and and turn them sideways, and all, and no kind of helmet on or anything. Uh, nowadays, I see children. I even have a bike myself, and I've got a helmet. And I see kids with helmets because. It almost seems like it would be dangerous to not ride with a helmet on a bicycle because you're going to crash. You're going to have problems. There's going to be there's going to be times when you could be injured. Well, I think maybe we have a more mature way of looking at this today than we did several years ago. And I think for leaders, it's so important that we have the protective gear on uh, so that when an accident happens, so when we collide in our leadership and some some fashion, well, there's protection available. And in the book of Ephesians, there's a, just a list of the armament that the Apostle Paul says that we should have. And one of those is, in Ephesians 6, it says this. It says, above all. So above everything else, at maybe, maybe the highest level, it says, take the shield of faith. Right? Above all, take the shield of faith. So I'm going to have all kinds of armor. And I talked about the helmet. I'm going to have a shield. Shield of faith is a particular kind of shield. And it says that with that shield, you'll be able to quench or extinguish the fiery darts, some Bibles say, or, or uh, one says the flaming missiles or the flaming arrows of the wicked or of the wicked one. That it's important to understand that as a follower of Christ, you are should be leading in, in some capacity. And in that leadership, well, there is... There is a wicked one, an evil one, as Paul uh, leads to in other parts of this chapter uh, of Ephesians, in Ephesians 6, that is uh, going to attack. There's going to be spiritual warfare that happens simply because he would like to take you out because your purpose is so great on this planet. You are destined to impact other people with the truth and to lead them into truth and into the knowledge of, of Jesus. And, and uh, as a leader, well, that's the greatest aspect of our leadership is the leading someone, leading someone into a relationship with him to make that step, that step. And well, as Paul is using uh, these uh, pieces of armor uh, to help us understand what maturity looks like, well, a shield of faith, uh, certainly in the Roman, with the Roman military, it would have been a sizable shield, um, four feet tall, two feet wide. That's that's pretty good size, and they would lift it up. That was protective. Uh, enemies would, would, would uh, come at them. Well, this was a, a protective uh, shield uh, to protect them from the enemy. Certainly, uh, when he says flaming arrows or fiery darts, uh, there was um, the potential that the enemy may use an arrow that was wrapped with, with cloth or with twine and pitch and set on fire, and that would hit them well, this shield was meant to stop that. Now, in the military, that was it was it was two pieces, two ply. Uh, I guess I'd say ply layers would be a better word maybe of wood on top of glued together. And and the hope was when that hit them, that would keep the the arrow from piercing them. But a flaming arrow, they would sometimes soak those shields in water so that when the arrow would hit, it would extinguish. There was nothing to burn, so it extinguished the fiery dart. And Paul's saying this, that, that there is a faith level in your life that can quench, extinguish right, the attack of the enemy, that he is going to attack, and he's going to attack with, with something that could burn down your house, that could burn down your life. And the Romans, well, uh, the, the, their military would use these. Many times you'll see in movies where they will use those to, uh, one of them is called the turtle, and it's amazing the strategy that they would use to position their shields and in front, around the sides, and on top, and they just move into where the enemy was at, protected, 
And faith can do that for you. Faith in your life as a leader, faith in your life is so important. In fact, above all, above all, take the shield of faith. And that is the tool, the piece of armor that you have that's going to extinguish these darts of the enemy. What do the darts look like? What do the arrows look like that he, that he throws into our life? Well, one of them, I think, is temptation. Temptation. Temptation will come into your life. This is for everybody. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing this. Um, the mature leader, the mature follower of Christ understands that temptation is going to come. How do you prepare for it? You prepare for it in knowing that temptation is going to come. It's going to come. So the things that I would be tempted for, I need to be prepared for. And then, well, there's something that the enemy could throw at me that I, I never expected. Jesus used uh, the word of God to, to just extinguish the fiery darts, the flaming arrows of temptation when the enemy tempted him. And so spending time in the word, knowing the word, well, that's going to help you with temptation. The faith posture is this, that because I believe the word of God to be true, because I believe uh, the, in the power of God's word that I'll use it in those times of temptation that I'll stand on it. Opposition. Every leader, every follower of Christ is going to experience opposition in their life. Uh, it may come through people. In fact, we understand that people aren't, it's not the enemy that we're wrestling with. Right? It's not flesh and blood, as the Apostle Paul says. No, um, it's, it's spiritual wickedness. It's, it's the influence of the wicked one in our life. And that's a lot of the opposition. It may come through people. And so I need to understand that one of the fiery darts is opposition. And because I'm going to experience opposition, well, faith is so important in my life to know that opposition is going to come, but my faith is not in what I see around me but my faith is in, right, a God who can do the impossible in my life. Deception, right? Temptation, opposition, deception. The enemy trying to bring a deceit into my life, trying to deceive me. That's why the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 that, that I need to be sober, I need to be vigilant, watchful, for there's an adversary, an enemy that's walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That he wants to to twist God's word. He wants to twist what I believe God is saying so that I'll believe a lie and be misguided. And, and the other, other area that, that he works in, right, a, a flaming arrow, a missile into my life, and I've got to throw up that shield of faith, is accusation that he'll bring things into my life that are accusatory, again, probably by people, sometimes in my own mind, and it will try to exalt itself above what God has said. And faith, well, that's where I got to stand. And you may say, Pastor, I don't have a lot of faith. You may say, I don't have a ton of faith. Well, here's why you have faith. Everyone that's viewing this, you have faith. The Bible says this, that to every person has been given a measure of faith. We all have a certain amount, a quotient of faith in our life. So we start with faith. So no matter where you're at on the spectrum of following Christ, you have faith. You, have faith. You, may, you may be new at this uh, Christ-like uh, Christ life, this Christ-like walk. Well, you have a measure of faith. Secondly, because when you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes, you have, a, you, have the, you have the ability to produce the fruit of the Spirit, which one of those is faith. Thirdly, because of the Holy Spirit in your life, there's a gift of faith, that's supernatural faith, that could be available in your life. And then ultimately, the word says this in Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That I need to be listening for the, the, the logos uh, word that I read and listening for the rhema word, spoken word of God, that, that God will speak to me through his word. He'll also speak to me with nuances about my life right now, today. What you're dealing with, what you're going through as a leader, as a follower of Christ, Help, helping and hoping to provide leadership for others to see Jesus, God will speak to you. And I challenge you, pick up faith as a shield in your life and you will quench. You will quench, extinguish the flaming arrows, the fiery darts, the missiles, as it were, of the enemy. And you'll walk victoriously in your leadership and in your uh, followership of Jesus. And I encourage you, do that. Lean on faith today.